Those beautiful places that you see on Instagram, they often look totally different when you go there in person. This is Nicole Glass out here in Washington, D.C., and today I'm going to talk about the reality of traveling and how to get photos of popular tourist locations without having all of the people in your photos. For those of you who take photos and sell them, especially if you're selling them on stock photography platforms, you probably don't want to get a bunch of tourists in your pictures, especially if you're trying to sell those photos as commercial images. Unless, of course, your intention is to photograph the crowds and to photograph tourists, there is a place for that as well, and that can also be fun. But in this particular video, we're going to talk about how to get the people out of your photos. Right now, I'm in downtown Washington, D.C. during one of the busiest times of the entire year, and that is cherry blossom season. Approximately 1.5 million people come to Washington, D.C. for the annual Cherry Blossom Festival, which is amazing. And that doesn't even consider how many additional people come before and after the Cherry Blossom Festival, which is when the city is still quite beautiful. Now, when you go on Instagram, you'll probably see really beautiful picturesque photos of the Tidal Basin with the cherry blossoms at their peak bloom and not a single person in the photo. But the reality is it looks a lot more like this. So how do you get those picture-perfect photos with nobody in them? Before I get into this video, I just want to apologize for the potentially poor sound quality. It was really hard to get away from the masses of tourists and find a quiet spot to film this video, but even the quietest spot is not very quiet. I have a bunch of birds screeching behind me, planes passing above, helicopters coming every two seconds, and cars honking their horns. But that's Washington, D.C. All right, so here's a few tips. Number one, take long exposures and use an ND filter. So if you take a long exposure, depending on how long that exposure is, you might not actually see the people because they might be moving so fast that they're not going to be exposed in your photo. If you're taking a long exposure photo in the middle of the day, it's definitely harder than taking it at night. So you'll want to use an ND filter. I'll link to a couple of ND filters in the description below. Two, go during off hours. If you're in a really touristy place, there may not be off hours, but there might be times where it's a little bit less crowded. If, for example, you come really early in the morning, you might see fewer crowds. And by really early, I mean 6 a.m., not 8 a.m., that is late. Or as early as the sun rises. Still, there will probably be other people there doing the exact same thing that you're doing, so you probably won't get that spot alone. But it's certainly better than coming during the middle of the day, plus the lighting will be a lot nicer. Number three, take close-up photos. This is particularly easy to do when you are at a place where there's beautiful cherry blossoms blooming, but it might be a little bit harder to do when you're trying to capture the entire landscape. If you're visiting a castle or a monument, you can try to zoom in on the little details of that monument or castle. You can move the camera up a little bit, try to crop the people out of the photo, but I guarantee you, you can take some photos without any people in it. Which brings me to the next Point. Find the proper angles. If you're at the Tidal Basin in Washington, D.C., you can photograph in a way where you actually cannot see that many people out here. You'll see the monuments in the distance, you'll see the trees lining the Tidal Basin, but you won't see too many of those crowds. And again, you can photograph up, especially if you're photographing a monument of some sort, so you don't get those crowds in your images. Next point, block the people using yourself, your friend, a tree, or something else. If there's a couple of people that are in the background ruining your shot, you can actually move your camera and create a photo where a person or an object is blocking the tourist or tourists behind it. This will give the impression that you are totally alone in this beautiful place. Sometimes you might have to wait for people to move and if they do, act fast because you might not have that chance again. And the last point is pretty much your last resort. If you are unable to capture angles where there's no people in your photos, then you can try to edit them out using Photoshop. This is not ideal. There's a lot more work involved, but like I said, this could be your last resort. And if you are in a place where it's simply impossible to take photos without people in them, 
then simply use the people. Take photos of the crowds, take photos of the tourists, make the people your subjects. That can be fun as well and create a totally different style. But again, those will not be commercial images, those will be editorial images. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the images of the very crowded National Mall during cherry blossom season. Hopefully this sparks some ideas for how you can take photos at popular tourist locations without the mobs behind you. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Till next time.